Helldivers 2 exploded in popularity, and there's still a lot of undiscovered details. People are constantly finding more things, and the devs have put a massive amount of attention to detail into everything. So I'm going to share 50 things you might not know in Helldivers 2. Some of these facts or details are fairly random, but some of them may be pretty helpful. So whether you've just got the game and you're ready to find out about everything, or you're a Helldivers vet who thinks you've seen it all, I guarantee there's at least one thing here you didn't know. Disclaimer, before I get started, if there's any tech about any specific weapon, it doesn't mean that you have to use that weapon. There's a lot of different damage types and feasible weapons, so feel free to use whatever works and whatever you have fun with. The tips I share are just known to work with the weapons I share them with. Now let's get started with this thing. I didn't realize this until recently, but the longer you stay in the mission, the more enemies appear. Get your behinds moving, soldiers, and extract earlier so you don't have to face larger and larger swarms of enemies. Meteor showers have been popping up all over since the last patch, and I wanted to share a tip I noticed. Oh you can see exactly where the meteor is going to land with the blue light showing up on the ground. It'll light up the area first, and then start focusing into a solid blue spot, right before it hits into the ground. Not really how light emitting objects work, but it makes for a nice little game design feature. Be careful now, soldiers, because it doesn't just have impact damage, but also a small AoE explosion damage around where it lands. Though I haven't actually seen it yet, fire tornadoes have been added to the game, and I'm so excited to try to find them. One of my friends kept telling us to only get the red-tipped artillery shells for the optional mission. I think he thought the red ones have the biggest explosions, but he didn't know that the yellow mini-nuke is actually not so mini. If you're not swarmed, look for the yellow mini-nuke and load it up for maximum effect, Helldivers. This surprised another one of my friends when he first realized this, but you don't need a second person to reload a recoilless rifle. You can do it yourself. Just grab the backpack and reload like normal, you just can't move. Speaking of recoilless rifles, you can take down dropships with the recoilless if you shoot them here, the side thruster things. Speaking of dropping dropships, the drop dropships will drop your enemies straight into the dirt, so blast bunches of bots to bits with a nicely timed drop dropship. Most of you probably already know that shooting the legs of a charger with a railgun is more effective than shooting its orange butt because its legs are their weak point. But did you know that it has been reported that shooting the back leg joints are even better to kill it faster? You can one-shot hulks and devastators every time if you shoot them right between the eyes with a railgun. It's a pretty hard shot to hit, but if you can't, it feels so good and will drop them instantly. I'm pretty sure this is the same after the railgun nerf as long as you have it in unsafe mode. Here's a guide to all secondary objectives and the relevant information. Pause the video and check out the original post and burn these symbols into your mind, soldiers. It's a critical briefing for mission success. Fun fact for you here, you can make a snowball on snow planets like Vandalon. All you have to do is find a snowy patch, crouch there for a little while, and it will give you the option to make a snowball and throw it. Have fun, Helldivers, as long as you haven't spent your allotted 6.2 seconds of enjoying the scenery. It's tricky, but you can get a direct hit with a 500 kilogram bomb onto Bile Titans. You just need the Bile Titan to walk forward a little into the direction you threw from. If you take a look at this state-of-the-art graphic designed by our Super Earth research team, basically the bomb will fly in from the direction you threw, and if the Bile Titan is in front of the stratagem beam, it should land a direct hit. Really quick aside, if you learned anything new yet, like and subscribe. It would really help the small channel out a lot. Okay, back to the facts. You can shoot these hell bombs to make a huge explosion afterwards. Combo this with a bunch of trailing bugs, and you can get a huge combo while clearing up a wave of enemies. Just make sure to stay the heck out of the way, soldiers. In case you've never heard of it, the CO1 permit is for... You know what? Never mind. Straight from the CEO of Arrowhead, the studio of Helldivers, there isn't any clear winner between guns, so you should really use whatever you like best. Did you know you can do this? Sending out an SOS. Here's a little bonus. When I first saw that video, I was confused because I didn't even know you can drop items. So I did you the favor of looking it up. You can hold X to drop things, and then use the wheel to choose whatever you want to drop. Related to that, you can hold the Q key to open the comms wheel to choose a callout for the, your team without needing a mic. You can tell people to go here or look out here and more. To get out of the way of a dodger, you can do this.
For those of you trying to 100% all unlockable items, or if you're just curious, the exact number of medals needed to unlock everything in the battle passes is currently 2,701. That's it! Easy peasy, right? Liberation worlds lose progress in big chunks every few days, and it's partially controlled by the game master Joel, a dev working at Arrowhead Studios. Actually, lots more things are run by Joel, and he acts kind of like a super game master, running a story with hundreds of thousands of players, kind of like a big D&D campaign. I think that's actually such a super cool and interesting game feature that keeps the game feeling like alive, you know? People originally thought that quitting an operation would give the enemies a point against our liberation campaign, but this is actually not true. It doesn't help or hurt our progress. So by all means, you can grind away if you like and play however you want, However, I implore our soldiers to fight the good fight and complete operations to liberate our worlds for democracy. If your teammate disconnects or goes AFK, you can punch them into the pelican and save the mission like this. ESA is on. Most of these are obvious to most people, but we want to spread the word and raise awareness that everyone is on the same page of these basic facts. You share your samples. No need to team kill or steal other people's samples. You all collect them at the end. Whenever possible, destroy the stalker layer. It will help your mission out a ton because these guys won't be spawning on your tail anymore. These doors require two people. Don't ignore them. Friendly suggestion, if you need a random soldier to help you, just hop on the mic and say exactly this. Hello, soldier. I need a double up on my location. And ping where you're at. Let's make this a thing so that all our Helldivers can become more efficient. By the way, turn off voice activation and turn on push to talk. As much as we love hearing the sweet voices of our brothers in arms, we don't need to hear you chew your Doritos. There's an easy way to get super samples. If you've been playing a while, you already know that this rock has all the naturally generating super samples on a map. But did you know that there's also a very specific shape on the minimap that you can look for to find this rock without scouring the entire map. Just ping the map there and it should be a minor place of interest. Go there and enjoy all the super samples. Here's how you do the cop them by the supplies achievement. You can already kind of do stealth in Helldivers like this. But there may be more expansions to the stealth gameplay in the future, according to the CEO of Arrowhead. There used to be a second weapon stats page with more weapon stats, but it was removed for whatever reason. Personally, I don't mind it. What do you guys think? Helldivers 1 had urban combat, so it may be possible that Helldivers 2 may one day have urban combat missions as well. Wink wink, Super Earth Liberation percentage? Wink wink? Despite starting out at mixed reviews due to understandably overloaded servers, Helldivers 2 now has a very positive review rating, if that's something that matters to you. It's not very practical, but you can exploit the timing in the Pelican 1 landing to make it hover around the extraction site and rain down on enemies around you. Geysers can kill Bile Titans. You just have to do this. There are so many more things in the works for Helldivers 2. Here's a list of a few things that are suspected or confirmed to be coming in. Vehicles are soon to be ready to be added into the game, including an armored jeep and a rover vehicle with mounted weapons. Swords or other melee weapons have been said to be something in the CEO's interests. So maybe one day we might have a laser sword, or my personal hope, a chainsaw? In your galactic map, the Super Earth has its own liberation percentage. This leads people to suspect that one day we might need to liberate it. This one is purely speculation, but it's fun to think about at least. There's been a lot of talk about how the next suspected faction coming to Helldivers are the Illuminates, hyper-advanced technological species that are trying to attack our peaceful, democratic way of life. Here's some more things we might see according to another Helldivers 1 player. 
There's some things that they saw from the first game that might happen to us, including the fact that they only started off with 12 difficulties, but three more were added in later for a total of 15. That means it might not be impossible for difficulties above Helldive, like for example, Inner Circle of Hell. On top of that, they also claim that the Illuminates may be even harder than bots. There may be more objectives and boss fights might be added to the game. The flamethrower can actually do pretty good damage to a bile titan since its fire damage just ignores the armor. It cooks from the inside like a steamed clam. Mm, steamed clams. Same with the chargers too. Actually with Wednesday's patch, there was a huge buff to flamethrower damage and it does immense damage now. I personally can't wait to try this out, I'm probably going to run it all the time. Your sentry has a hitbox and it can tank a hit from your mortar, causing you to die. Your cape gets more tattered the more you use your jump pack. They have found Hive Lord skeletons in the deserts. If you don't know what that means, just know that the Bile Titans are considered small on their home planet. You can go into first person in the Pelican, just ADS once you're in. The Vitality Booster always seems like a no-brainer to choose, but how much does it actually help our health? This reddit post did the work and found out that the boosted health is roughly 30%. Did you know that you can get more samples than the sample counter on the top of the screen? This means that you can get more samples than the number at the top right of the screen because that number only counts naturally generating samples, not ones that you can get from inside vaults or whatnot. When it dies, the Vital Titan can land on you and kill you, so be careful out there soldiers. Point of interests are marked by these diamond shapes on the map. Once you search them and clear them, they'll turn into this polygon shape. Finally, for our last tip, drum roll please. There are tool tips that you can get as you drop down. This means that they can display helpful hints for you to learn something new while you're waiting to land. Alright, that was 50 things you didn't know about Helldivers 2. If there's anything interesting I missed or didn't know, let me know in the comments, I may make a part 2. This took a long time to compile and edit, so it would be a huge favor if you liked and subscribed. Keep fighting on, soldiers. See ya!